We all go a little mad sometimes. Be afraid. Be very afraid. They're here. George Romero brings us the most intensely shocking motion picture experience for all times. It gets up and kills. The people it kills get up and kill. This situation must be controlled before it's too late. They are multiplying too rapidly. Dawn of the Dead. Wow, that was that that little cut at the end. That shit was messy. So today, hi. Speaking of messy, hi Lee. <laughs> so hi. Hello there. I'm Lee, and I'm Nathan. And this is a podcast episode. I'm gonna fall asleep <laughs> in the middle of this. I was up watching this movie until literally like six a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and you're listening to They're, They're here. here podcast. A discussion. Dissection. Of all things horror, fear, and, and macabre. What's the German for macabre? I keep thinking like back to like when I you... think macabre is just a French word for like strange or something. I know, but like isn't there uh, like a German word for it? Because like you use und das macabre. <laughs> and, and, and like I, ever oh. since then I couldn't think of like... The German for macabre. <laughs> <laughs> macabre. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the... I want the German. Oh, no. it literally is. Oh. <laughs> macabre. Macabre. <laughs> <laughs> like, you literally look up the German for it. It's like, no. Macabre. You only get the French. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, there's no, um... Like, the German word for saboteur is... Saboteur. Yeah, because it's a French word. <laughs> you know? I love that on Drag Race one time where we asked fucking Nikki Dawes. She's like, what's the French for saboteur? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. So Dawn. Dawn, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn, how you doing, Dawn? We're continuing our um, Romero kind of coverage, I guess, with, um, I think, kind of the more iconic, generally... Um, Dawn of the Dead. Night of the Living Dead obviously is responsible for like the birth of the modern zombie as we know it now, but this is also the only one to say the word zombie. Yes, this film, 1978. 78. Uh, George A. Romero, of course, living legend, icon. Well, he's dead. Well, you know what I mean. Icon, <laughs> uh, can we stop <laughs> slamming doors, people? Thank you. Um, icon, you know, you know, just say icon just, again. Just uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but is it fashion though? <laughs> oh, you know, it's it's just it's 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 it's, it's everything I want him to be. You know, it's I I tend to think that if you if you're just you know George A. Romero's name is just uh, synonymous with zombies, although he never came up with them. Uh, he's the one that popularized them, and I think actually we talked about that in Night of the Living Dead. But yeah, well, know, these are like not what our typical, what like classic zombies are. Like we did touch on that briefly. That it's like zombies is like a voodoo term, um, yes. which again is the reference from this movie. It's why they're called zombies, um, directly linked with voodoo. And we actually get like kind of brief glimpses of voodoo in this movie, and kind of at the start. Yeah, it is also mentionable. The uh, the apartment complex is it just this movie is just wacko as fuck. Yeah. Like it is the first like. Until we get to the mall, the whole thing is literally just like, like, what am I fucking looking at? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, it's gruff. It's like, this is going to sound weird, but it's like an ugly movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like nice to look at, but like, I, that's like, um, it's not because it's made badly. It's just because it's like, it's sterile. It's very sterile. It just reminds me of Grindhouse Pictures. Yeah, for you know real. What I mean? Another one where the actual film itself is it's dirty. dirty. Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta, you know... Just hats off to George A. Romero, you know. <laughs> he did it. He did the thing. He did the thing. And let's let's just jump into this this like whole That makes a cameo in this movie. Yes, he does actually. So let's fun. just let's just talk about this whole fucking opening sequence that I really was looking at the uh, what a good 20 30 minutes in and I was still like what the actual fuck is going on. So it opens up. This is canonically three weeks after Night of the Living Dead mm -hmm. which is crazy um, 
because kind of at the end of Night of the Living Dead, they made it seem like it was one county affected or it was like even just one kind of small isolated incident in mm-hmm. one town. Mm-hmm. And it kind of made it seem like, oh, the police will just take care of it. Like, it'll be fine. It'll be over with. And then this is kind of like an evolution of that where it's a couple of weeks later. Well, like literally 10 years later. Um, But yeah, it's kind of people still aren't quite panicking the way you would expect people mm-hmm. to. I feel like we're... um. Like I'm kind of looking at that from like an apocalypse movie now where like the the stakes are so much higher. Well, they're not even much higher, but I feel like people are just way more like, oh, fuck, this is actually a problem. Yeah. Versus where people are like, oh, yeah, but like, am I going to make it home by 10? You know, it doesn't really <laughs> yeah. seem like such a problem. Like, because there's this little kind of, I want to say it, it just, to me, it obviously is like, like something that could have been cut out of the film and never would have made a difference. Was this uh, little interlude, like maybe an hour into the film, of this like white people cookout scene with all of the hunters, like just randomly shooting zombies on the side of the road with the army? Oh, no, I thought and it was, was cute. Like, what the fuck? Like, and also like super nice music, like, like, up- upbeat cheerful music yeah it was happy it was literally like family's first barbecue (laughs) that's also the real national guard uh, for (laughs) pittsburgh they like george was able to call them in as a favor because like pittsburgh kind of just unanimously like fell in love with george romero Mm. you know like he's used it for so many of his movies that people are kind of like thanks for like putting us on the map bro (laughs) you know i feel like people exclusively well at least in my mind i associate pittsburgh with night of the living dead or romero you know yeah well, it is written by him. It's directed by him. Uh, but starring him. Starring him. <laughs> but we have, and we just literally just spoke about it. Um, we have Dario Argento. Dario. Who is... Co-producer. Co-producer. And he was the one who specifically asked to edit the film for the European release. Yeah, there's a... So there's like a Romero cut, which is just like, I think... Sorry, the, this is Suspiria, in case you're wondering who Dario Argento is. Or yeah. if you're new to this podcast, in which case, why the fuck don't you know who Dario <laughs> Argento is? <laughs> so there's like the theatrical cut, which came out, which was co-produced by uh, Dario Argento. Mm-hmm. And then there's the Argento cut. And then there was... Um, a Japanese TV version mm-hmm. that was released, which is referred to as the Suspiria Cut. <laughs> then there's... <laughs> <laughs> and then we watched the director's cut, or the, quote, extended cut, which is, like, almost, like... It's, like, a chunk longer. But um, yeah. I kind of figured, I was like, right, let's just touch bases and, like, watch everything that was made, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Which includes some, like, loss in quality and some changes in lighting and audio quality and stuff. <laughs> but, again, like, I don't mind that. It kind of it adds to the, um, the kind of, like, I don't know, you know, double feature kind of uh, feeling to it. But I did, before yeah. I went to sleep last night, I found and liked and, like, saved a cut that somebody saved a TV cut but they kept but it's from the original like airing from like 1978 or whatever like that so all the like 70s ads and everything are in it like the ad for Alien like pops up in the middle of it and stuff it's so good but it's like CBS's big movie you know, it well, was it's really funny good. you should mention like double feature kind of thing because the cinematographer. I mean, like if you watch this, you can find the link to it on like YouTube and stuff like. Oh, that. there's so, so many. There's like them. plenty of different cuts on YouTube. We watched the extended cut, yes. which was the cinematographer Michael Gurnick who is also a producer and part director of this film, Mm -hmm. which also makes sense because some of these lighting choices and changes and like literally within the same scene, like the frame, like this is going to sound so pretentious, but the actual frame ratio does change in some of these scenes for whatever fucking reason. And bear in mind, that is the director's cut. The the theatrical cut is, um, it's more smooth sailing from start to finish. It's more like uh, consistent. Yeah, so like Michael Gurnick is uh, he he's a cinematographer who was who who like he produced a lot of things, but he was also he did Creep Show, he did the Monsters, he did the original version of the Crazies with Romero and Creep which, Show with by Romero the way, too. Creep Show, yeah. We like we we definitely have to like uh, give it where props are due because like I mean I'm guessing they also had a little bit more budget when it came to like Creep Show and stuff down the line. Yeah, for sure. Like they had Stephen King attached to that and everything. It was it was it was good. I mean, like uh, you know applause for the effort yeah you know, a for effort because <laughs> there's room for everybody yeah. <laughs> <laughs> insert shady rattlesnake voice here <laughs> and then um music by goblin 
and this quoted is a as mandatory kind of thing. Well, yeah, I feel like Dario Argento, like they're just kind of like part of his um, like his posse. Like yeah. you get Dario, you get. But like, I feel like that's um, <laughs> I don't mind that at all. But I did say to you, I could have done with like two thirds of the soundtrack in this movie because yeah. every scene has a score, and the way some of it is like mixed. I, like, can't hear what people are saying. Oh, like, yeah. Like, the music is louder than the, the dialogue. Yeah. I think, kind of, particularly at this start, where... But I feel like that kind of could be part of the whole mania of that first 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, like, just kind of, like, for reference, it opens up with um, with um, Fran. Well, Francine, but, like, I'll just call her Fran. Fran. Um, <laughs> the opening shot is kind of cool. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of similar to Night of the Living Dead, where the opening shot is kind of just... Um, it sounds weird it's not a big deal but like I love the the framing of it where it's like it pulls out from her and she's like sleeping up against this like red shot carpet Mm -hmm. and then we just get Dawn of the Dead pop up but she wakes up and immediately goes into like Vietnam inside a television studio because everybody is just um disgruntled I guess just in general (laughs) Yeah. Like, for no particular reason. Like, so far as I know, like, the whole kind of reason that they were <laughs> disgruntled... <laughs> um, Which is the was, opposite of gruntled, by the way. <laughs> um, is that they... Uh, that the army is uh, descending upon, like, basically, like, the neighbourhood. Philly. And they're, they're telling and them this. to... Uh, like partial partially evacuate whereas the producers are telling them fucking stay and finish the show and blah 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 yeah also while simultaneously you can hear like in the background gunshots and you know like explosions and you can also get people like literally shouting at the um the talk show host get that idiot off the screen back. yeah and like you're just like does he know he's on air who the fuck is like <laughs> arguing with each other like what yeah. is going on and half the time right a lot of people are talking at the same time whereas even the actress uh, jane uh, uh gaylene ross See, got that so wrong there. Um, <laughs> Jay, she, like, gay with a J. Is like he's whispering her as like be up at the like uh, the roof at like nine p.m. sharp. And she's like, "Don't wait, be come looking for you." She's like trying to talk her lines, and then she's like, "Wait, wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> also, she never doesn't look exactly like this in the whole movie. Yeah, the whole movie. Like, so I'm gonna. I actually didn't really pay attention to exactly how long they're in the mall like, from like <laughs> oh, when they like leave the good, station because like, it's a couple near. of weeks at least. Yeah. But uh, every time she's there, her hair is fully blown out. She's, there's a there's a <laughs> yeah. really weird scene, kind of Joker esque scene later, where she's well, just she like the makeup. On. Yeah, she's just like smearing makeup on, and then she's like. With a gun in her hand, and then I we get to the next me. scene, and you could see for real, <laughs> and like her eyes are still stained or whatever, but the makeup is just gone. So like that little two second scene of her just applying. <laughs> you still haven't watched? Oh yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I also I get like kind of a Shelley Duvall quality off her a little Hi, bit. Do you? I'm Shelley Duvall. But do you not like she kind of yeah. has like kind of an odd look, and she's kind of. Not as mousy as Shelley Duvall oh, is in no, like not The Shining. As, I would describe Shelley Duvall as meek. Meek, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, like, kind of brittle and broken down. Um, like, disgusting, almost. <laughs> no, I love Shelley Duvall I, I as well. But um, <laughs> I, she's kind of my favourite character in this movie besides Peter. But, like, we don't really get a lot of her, which is kind of annoying. I just like Ken Forey. So beautiful. What a beautiful he chocolate. Is the man. baby daddy <laughs> of Keenan. <laughs> Uh, from Nickelodeon in the nineties, Keenan and Kel. Daddy. No, Cal is the cousin. No, I know, Kenan's but you said Keenan from Nickelodeon. But it's well, Keenan and Cal. But I wanted to say Keenan because that's his dad. I know, but the show isn't called Keenan. I know. I know, but you said Keenan from Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Snoop Dogg on the track. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but Snoop Dogg. Ken Lyon, kind Snoop? of like mm-hmm. uh, at one point the arm- artist formerly known as Snoop Lion. Um, <laughs> But Ken Foray kind of um, is he's the everything. one I think like you think of when you think of this movie. Like he's the face of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, again, he was kind of went on to be in plenty of horror movies. He worked yeah. with Rob Zombie a lot. Yeah, um, he's in the Halloween remake. He's and in Halloween, in, Lords of Salem, um, Devil's Rejects, Devil's Rejects. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in. Oh, uh, he's in Texas Chainsaw uh, Three. Texas Chainsaw Three. Yeah, the exactly, first movie yeah. called Leatherface. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, he's, can yeah, we just quick side note that yeah. Leatherface trailer that came out, that new Texas Chainsaw trailer? Yeah, let's let's. I don't like the mask. Um, I'm not. I, oh, actually, come to think of it, um, Ken Forey was voiced one of the actors in the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I oh my god, just come to think of it? Sorry, yes. Uh, but, yeah, no, I'm not sold on the mask. I'm also super, super cringe-worthy of that fucking bus scene. I mean, we don't know the context, of course, yet, just in case. But... But people do speak like that, which is the cringy You part. are... Ca- He's literally we- wielding a chainsaw at you with a flesh mask on, and you're just like, dude, you're bro, you make a move and you're gonna be cancelled. I'm like, really, bitch? Well, people don't, you know, people don't know. I wouldn't fucking react like that, but then again, I'm not of that gender. Generations, so <laughs> don't open a fucking mouth. About I don't know. I'll see for context, but so far I don't like the mask. Some of the shots in the trailer were pretty cool. Him yes. in the field, I thought were yeah, really. Yeah, I love that kind of like creepy. slow where he like pops up out of the. Is yeah. it like sunflowers? Like dead sunflowers? It looks like sunflowers. Yeah, he, got, he gives me more like uh, scarecrow vibes than leatherface vibes. Yeah, I was thinking kind of that. jeepers creepers ish almost. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Okay, so Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> But we're gonna we're gonna review it. We're gonna yeah, no, I will month. for sure. We're gonna have a good time with it. We'll just rip. It I think it comes out in like three weeks. Yeah, it's gonna be good fun. So, um, can we just talk about like this invasion of the, the, like it's a high rise uh, apartment building. Uh, like uh, we think I don't think we ever get like an external shot of this building yeah. at all. Uh, but this... also like I'm confused as to why they're there in the first place. Evacuation. It's like yeah, but they're also like breaking down doors and shooting people. I know, but they're zombies. There's that one guy who's racist and uh-huh. who's like um that was ins- so extra in insert, my head when I seen it. Insert n insert uh, insert slurs about brown people. Oh my think god, there's like, literally guy in brown face. Think, in there's there. literally guy in brown face. Yeah, oh my and god. Oh my god, wait, hold on. Have you ever seen the show Black White? Yeah. Dude, I watched yeah. that whole thing yesterday with Emma Nashling. That also, show there was a biker. I just, also, there's a biker who appears that he is Latin descent, uh, but he's wearing a sombrero randomly. Yeah. At the end of the... Did you notice that guy? It's, it's kind of a lot. Yeah. But also, <laughs> I don't get the full dynamic because like, when we first get into this scene, it seems like the, the squad on the roof are opposing the squad on the ground. Right? But then they're it's weird it's like but how did you get up to the fucking roof without yeah exactly it's just it seems weird but then they get in and this is like where uh, is Christina (laughs) but honestly this looks like like a lit nightclub no joke like (laughs) But for real, it's <laughs> mania. And then, like, they finally get into the actual building. And mm. then the first shot, they get, like, when they get in there, is a good door being kicked down and a guy's head just being blown apart. Yes. It's so I good. Love it. Some of the zombie kills in this are fucking hilarious. This like, is there's one later. Definitely some really good grindhouse stuff. And you know me, I love gore. Yeah, for real. A, a practical gore. I want to see some of it is hilarious. <sighs> like, some you of know. it is really hilarious. Yeah. And, like, again, that's all thanks to Tom Savini. We'll get mm-hmm. to him later. Yeah. Um, Femme Dom Savini. I deep friend this morning. of the pod but there's one kill later where um, Ken Farhead just picks up a zombie and just throws it over yeah. the yeah <laughs> it was so good <laughs> like that's the thing the zombies in this movie really seem to kind of just be like as inconvenient as like heavy snow or something right like they're like we'll just walk around them. yeah it's fine <laughs> It's like we're fine as long as there isn't literally like hundreds of them, which I think is always the problem with zombies yeah. until like twenty eight days, where it was like they're literally it's fine if there's like a few of them, mm-hmm. you know. But if they're crowding up over the hill, exactly, you're fucked. <laughs> but again, it's kind of it's hard to kind of get the scope of like how big this like zombie pandemic is. Yeah, you know. And also, I forget last time that it was caused by aliens by a spaceship. Yeah, and then they yeah. kind of just retcon that to voodoo, which makes a whole lot more sense. It was something to do with I think it was Venus or something like that. Yeah, like a, a fucking thing fell from like like a. Uh, yeah, like a UFO or something like that, like crashed in the countryside. <laughs> it caused then... like the dead to rise. Yeah, yeah, for real, bro. <laughs> no, to be fair though, that was in the sixties, and I do appreciate that because that was like the fifties and the sixties were like full on. It's only all ten years aliens. before, though. I know, know, but I still loved it. Like though. that first movie is I will an alien invasion pass. movie, not a zombie movie. I will literally give it a pass because Fabulous. I'm very happy with it. <laughs> so, I just really want to talk very quickly about the editing of this film uh kind of specifically mixed with how goblin is on the track because 
throughout like the first I want to say a good hour of this film the soundtrack only partly changes um during like the happy scenes and the rest yeah. is just like the music sort of doesn't change well it's and, some, some of it is the original Night of the Living Dead um score but it's it's edited in such a way that I don't know if you noticed but during the um like quote unquote kind of like shopping scene of, mm -hmm. of the when they're in the mall there's these parts where the editing of the music is literally chopped off scene starts scene ends and then oh, the music starts like again. mid scene like mid scene yeah it's, it's a little distracting so, yeah it's <laughs> aggravating it's distracting it's also like it literally is cut between Argento and Romero so like you yeah. literally do have two different people trying to edit this together which it, you know I've said this before specifically with um, Candyman when we were talking about that, like too many chefs in the kitchen yeah it doesn't work well but see I like the fact that they split off into so many different cuts because mm -hmm. it kind of it's like Blade Runner or something like that where it's like you can kind of there's choose like your own adventure almost of Blade Runner I think or three yeah there's a like final cut director's cut theatrical yeah. cut and all that kind of shit um, mm -hmm. I was actually listening to a review of Blade Runner on my way down here but um oh and Claudio Argento was also a producer on this Claudio yeah, yeah but I love that there's like um that there is like a bunch of complete separate cuts you mm -hmm. know like you can watch Argento's and have kind of maybe not a completely different film but like a completely different vibe yeah you know I feel like this one the vibe is the tone is inconsistent yes like <laughs> a lot you know but also this it just it this movie gives me like um kind of fever dream it's like playing Silent Hill kind of at like when I were playing some kind of horror game where it's just mm -hmm. like oh fuck I'm kind of bored and lost yeah. but just from the like I feel like that's kind of bet into this movie is the like oh it's not really that fun anymore being locked in a mall like yeah. the, the effect is kind of worn off I actually did think that I think I even sent that to you was how the sort of mall drama sort of takes place is like that tar sort of turns into like a 45 minute character study of a slow descent into cabin fever Do you exactly know what I mean? that's what it gives me it gives me that kind of feeling of like oh I just want to go outside mm. you know I just want to like look at something else specifically with the characters of like Francine and um oh my god what's his name Roger Roger like oh he suddenly loses it like, he like he suddenly lo almost dies it. and then it's like woo let's go he's literally like on crack for like the rest of the movie oh god uh, like actually come to think of it like um, David Emigy who does play uh, Stephen. Stephen he was in uh, Basket Case uh huh yeah which yeah. I was like uh, okay right yeah. okay <laughs> I love Basket Case we'll have to get to that one day we oh yeah we will full male new friend of D in that oh it's very fun and Basket Case too he was in the sequel too which is pretty interesting but it's like they so Stephen and Steven. Francine. Stephen. Stephen. Um, uh, you want to get some snooze, snooze, Stephen? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, I didn't know if you get that. So um, they have this, like, uh, and again, it's a plot that's only kind of introduced more than halfway through the film that she is pregnant. And they but she's like, it doesn't ask, matter. Don't pay attention to it at all. Right? And, and then, then they, they, they ask him... <laughs> Do you want to abort it though? But they okay. Oh, but they does she think, want to abort it though? But see, I was gonna say they do <laughs> think that she's like asleep. Like she wakes up in, um, like a little closet, kind of pressed up. She is smoking and drinking all over this movie too. She's planning yeah. on keeping that baby. There's like a scene she's dedicated drunk, to them drinking. Full on glass of wine. Yeah. like lying in bed, still watching TV that is still going. Might I add? I I, I kind of assumed it was like. Did you notice like those interviews that were like? interspersed throughout the film like of the oh, same but, studio but that's what I was going to say I think that's like what that is though I think it's literally like a like it's not like television it's mm -hmm. not like oh let's watch like the show it's just like yeah well I'm, I'm professionalism <laughs> far too much it's just like for um, kind of updates or whatever like that and then we get the thing that it's like if the company logo is still on the screen that means they're still broadcasting or attempting to yeah you know but like my thing was like oh Fuck! It's seventy eight. Like VHS and like movies, like it's like still home a rentals huge are thing. No, are still not like the biggest deal. So it's not like you couldn't just like count on the fact of like. Oh, it was the eighties that it became. Movie. I was gonna yeah, say yeah. Sorry. You couldn't just yeah. like count on the fact that that mall in particular, which is also a relatively new idea. <laughs> you better cut that out, Holly. <laughs> but like the idea of a mall 
at this time was still relatively new because it's like, look, it's one of those indoor shopping malls, you know? Like he calls it out as like a weird thing. Yeah. You know? And then he's like, they're talking about like, it's a one-stop shop and all that kind of shit. By the way, this movie is completely just about consumerism and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, Actually, yeah. Let's, let's actually talk about that real quick. So those are kind of like... What do you take away from it? Well, Romero is like, uh, like a guy with a message. I feel Mm -hmm. like with his movies, even up until like, I don't know, like his last movie and stuff like that. Yeah. Everything has something behind it, whether it's intentionally or not. I think that kind of started off with Night of the Living Dead, obviously being his first movie, but people kind of going, oh shit, this movie is actually way deeper than I think you even intended to make it. Yeah. With it being kind of, um, you know, like it deals with like racism and stuff inadvertently. Mm-hmm. Like that wasn't written into the script. It just yeah. is what happens. Like if that guy was white at the end, we would just assume that they thought he was a zombie, mm-hmm. you know, but because it's left ambiguous, I think that's what made the movie all the more legendary. Yeah. But with this, we kind of get like vibes of communism and, um, or like, don't trust thy neighbor. It's mentioned a few and, times, isn't it? Yeah. For, Capitalism com- versus communism. Exactly. It's like all these zombies are attracted to, um, the mall. a mall because like, it's what they remember doing. And mm. so they kind of walk around and walk around aimlessly. And then they like turn on, <clears throat> Okay. they turn okay. on all the <laughs> like music and all the lights in the stores yeah. so that they kind of just keep in this like endless loop of just walking around mm. um which again it's like all kind of metaphor for like you're just mindlessly consuming like yeah. you're not even thinking about it and then yeah. these people being like fuck yeah we have a mall entirely to ourselves and then they're like it's not really worth anything yeah if i can't really show it off to anybody what's the point of having a fur coat if only i see it yeah, I, I would definitely agree. It is, uh, I think, I mean, obviously, like, taking away from the uh, Night of the Living Dead with its subtle uh, version of of the message, even though, obviously, it wasn't intentional. Um, but this one was very intentional. Uh, oh, mean, for it's, sure. It's it was very all. intentional. And, um, which I don't mind. I Sometimes I think uh, films like this do need to be made where you kind of do need to be bashed over the head with the message in order to, you know what I mean? Like, just giving a justification. Yeah. And see, I feel like, yeah, we feel that way now. But, yeah. like, then, again, it's like, <laughs> just coming into the 80s, yeah. um, the, the decade of, like, consumption and, like, kind of gluttony, um, this concept was still relatively new, you know? The idea yeah. of being, like, having consumer culture being a thing, not just, like, kind of getting what you need or whatever it's like stuff like this is accessible to everybody now and everybody has become mindless zombies just yeah. spending you know excess all that kind of stuff well let's let's actually just talk about the zombies real quick so i know that savini when he was sort of concocting the idea of how to modernize the zombie from the previous film he did paint him gray <laughs> paint him gray uh, he wanted to do this homage where of course like the zombies in the previous film only had I think it was just a little bit of dark makeup around the eyes yeah and it was all in black and white so we couldn't really tell they were like they were paled out and stuff but like yeah. everything then, was just kind of they were just dead people like oh god so I literally have the note here to say some of these zombies are some stylish motherfuckers they all did it themselves they all they self-styled did styled yeah and uh, also I'm hearing some content used from Shaun of the Dead so I mean I know obviously this is the original right here but I couldn't help but think like oh there's that like goblin sound effect that yeah. I hear in Shaun of the Dead and when and, this movie opens know. up with zombie nation right yeah <laughs> so it's um like I, I I absolutely adore this version of a zombie uh, like we were just talking about it like let's let's talk about the elephant in the room the Harry Krishna zombie <laughs> oh I love it it's so iconic though it's very good <laughs> I loved it I was like that's such a random character to like do you imagine like George A. Romero just approaching a Harry Krishna follower and just be like look listen I will pay you a dollar give you some food and a Paint Dawn of the Dead zombie t-shirt if yes you, you can bring your scene. tambourine <laughs> no you don't have to wear shoes you don't have to preach but you can if you want to but you just can't do it on film I also love fully though how he just kind of like yeah I'm gonna go in there yeah. you know and like <laughs> like in, in a movie now or even a movie like a couple of years later that would be like a ah, like a big deal but you yeah. kind of just like anyone in here like he mm-hmm. kind of just strolls in and she's like she just kind of walks to the other side of the room yeah and it's like is this is, yeah this is gonna be bad for me or no with those zombies there's a lot of like at least from the from the the, the living uh perspective there's a lot of like unnecessary fluff that the actors do 
when it comes to reactionary methods, like her just literally like walking over to the other side of the room instead of like circumnavigating the literally she could have just slow. Walked around one. Him. She could have just walked around him. Yeah, pushed him over. Oh Instead, she like gives him a light show. She like cracks up <laughs> in two show. flares. Where I'm like, what a fucking waste of a flare, lady. Oh my god. But in my mind, I was like, oh, just like shove it through him. Just like do something, you know? Because I feel like these zombies one-on-one like could very easily just like you could just kick their head in oh 100 <laughs> you know like i bad. think these uh but the people are retarded <laughs> you know i i really do think there are some questionable motives but just very quickly uh savini did regret after the filming he was like oh god it's terrible because they were um like they appear when he wanted to do the gray or the gray skin tone i should say yeah. they appeared blue on the because of the it, editing again, it's format. so not consistent yeah. they're like blue depending on which shot it is it's mm-hmm. blue green gray or just kind of and white the lighting as well depending on the lighting like whether it was daytime whether it was nighttime or whether it was like uh, you know like fluorescent yeah. light the skin tone changed from it, it varied from like zombie to zombie now i think that actually benefited them though instead of ever just being one slate color mm-hmm. the whole way across mm-hmm. i think um, yeah, it kind of looks a little bit better when there's, like, variants, but also all these zombies, like, they're just grey. Mm-hmm. Like, none of them are, like, injured or anything. Like, nobody's, like, missing limbs or, like, yeah. there's no blood anywhere. I think at the end when Steven dies, uh, fucking spoiler alert, it's, like, For kind what, of shocking to see him. <laughs> no, but, like, to see him covered in blood, I was like, see, that, that oh. to me is what a zombie looks like. Yeah, you see, this is the... <laughs> This is the one zombie, I mean, besides obviously the way Roger goes out, this is the one zombie that Steven just looks at him, just looking at him like, oh, God. Oh. Somebody watched Night of the Living Dead. How it, um, yeah, like somebody did their research, like a half an hour before fuck, filming. Stiff yeah. Arm, you know, <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of that in this movie. But oh. again, it's like, that's like what zombies were. Cocking the head to the side and just like, arr, arr, arr. Yeah. oh, yeah. I literally sent you a voice message of how. How the zombies like like uh, like how do I say it? Yeah, just like it's kind that. of vaguely hungry, kind of just gnashing. <laughs> vaguely hungry. You know? Yeah. I like, mean, we don't get talking zombies munchies. until um, oh well, Day of the Dead and kind of Return of the Living Dead. Mm. Return of the Living Dead is what introduces the concept of brains. Mm. You know, which I feel like again doesn't get enough credit i feel like if you ask somebody to do an impression of a zombie or no i feel 10 years ago 10 15 years ago if you asked somebody to do an impression of a zombie they would have stretched their arms out straight and gone Brains. yes true i you know? absolutely like nowadays i mean like it's the dead. first thing yeah walking dead or just one of those sprinters the greg zombies. nicotero brand of zombies yeah. as opposed to the romero zombies I actually did a romero zombie well romero slash you did great um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but was, uh, how dare you Romero slash Savini style where it was kind of that like plain kind of grey kind of just dead pallid skin or whatever like that yeah. but with plenty of blood or whatever oh yeah just like I, I love that <laughs> yeah. oh yeah you look like the 4th of July <laughs> but um yeah no I'm like I'm not mad at it I'm not mad at the, oh, no, the by look by no means I really do appreciate the kind of further development of yeah. zombies uh, like I mean of course like we wouldn't have the ones that we have now if it wasn't for Romero to be sure and I feel like this movie specifically mm-hmm. even more so than Night of the Living Dead mm-hmm. like when you see like zombie references like if a zombie movie is made now chances are they're going to reference this movie not mm-hmm. Night of the Living Dead you know and I you love see the it everywhere that the, <laughs> you don't sort of I mean apart from obviously the um, the bikers that are getting like torn to shreds at the end which I adore mm. um, every time you see a zombie eating meat it's like a cow bone or, I was like, going to say none of these are beef. it's like that's not human anatomy <laughs> that's like the hip of an elephant or something yeah. it's crazy looking they're like femurs that are like this thick on yeah. the end they're yeah fucking mental <laughs> although I will give it there's a scene in this movie where I was like fuck yeah that is so creepy that is yeah. so creepy when they get into the mall and they first start exploring when they find that like pit of just zombies sitting there in the cage yes or no it's in the it's, it's in, in the, the apartment building yeah. yeah I was like that's so twisted some of them are like tied up in like sacks and some mm. of them are bagged and roped and yeah. stuff like that but it's the idea that they're just in there and they're being fed you know oh. and that comes up as part of a like a theory of like how we just quell them is to just feed them and just get rid of people because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need a fucking baby but um <laughs> 
Yeah, I thought that was so creepy. And then this guy, the the priest, co- oh, who comes yeah. out, and I'm like, it, it took me a second because his motion doesn't, like, because I thought that was just a cane, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, his motion actually isn't like changing at all. And then mm. he turns, and I'm like, oh, the crutch is his leg. But like, I've never seen that as a replacement for a prosthetic leg before. It's usually crutch or prosthetic leg. It's mm. not crutch as prosthetic leg. Yeah. But um. Also, he's like, I'm going to go upstairs and find my sister. Bye. <laughs> and they're like, I okay, like, bye. The, you know what, actually, the funny thing about that was, um, like, not five minutes later when they're, uh, when they land on the airfield and he goes in and kills Tom Savini's niece and nephew. Mm. He goes for the coffee. <gasps> they shoot some kids in this movie a couple he, of times. He goes for uh, uh, the coffee cup in the machine and he goes, damn, doesn't work. And I was like. Shit, the coffee's out. <laughs> and a zombie apocalypse. If the coffee is out, consider me fucked. Okay? No, my main thing, which comes up in this movie, is like, y'all got cigarettes? <gasps> you know? And I, no, this this literally made me scream, made me laugh literally out loud. He's like, y'all got any cigarettes? And I don't think I, I don't think these people are in the theatrical cut at all. Oh, no. Um, he's like, y'all got cigarettes? And they're all like, no, no. And they all like check themselves. And then as soon as he walks away, <laughs> typical smoker thing as well fucker you know you pull out your cigarettes and <laughs> but this chick man Fran, like Fran is chain smoking in this movie oh my so god so heavily post finding out she's pregnant uh, when they're ha- talking about the if abortion and stuff like that for real <laughs> Uh, after they're talking about the abortion, when Peter goes into her, uh, yeah, goes after into they her, talk about she's her already smoking a cigarette. With, yeah. She's like, I did it ten minutes ago um, <laughs> with this cigarette. No, but she's smoking a cigarette when he comes in, and then she puts it out. And then as soon as she puts it out, she opens like opens another cigarette. She takes another cigarette and smokes it. Oh my god! But I'm like, it's all. We have choices. all these cigarettes in the world. You oh. know, they're everywhere. There's a. And then, just randomly just popped into my head before I forget it. The guy at the end taking his blood pressure. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> he ta- he's taking it first and then he's trying to take it and then they get attacked. Yeah. And then mid attack when everybody else is dead he takes it and then yeah. his arm just gets stuck in it. Yeah. And he gets separated from the machine with his arm still in it. You know? Oh my God. The whole time it was stuck in there but the gore is so good because it's real guts and this is one thing that actually really stuck with me because I've always been like since I was younger a huge fan of Tom Savini like mm-hmm. specifically yeah um because you know his face is his face but um I was watching <laughs> that's it. a face you could wait hold on is that is that the um human chair of the week I have 100% look look what I did I took a photo of his face oh, yeah. when he first shows up. So beautiful. No, Tom Savini is like an extraordinarily beautiful man. Um, <laughs> but also, I always just thought he was like super cool because he's like an artist, but he isn't like uh, like bookish at all. He's like like cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, his experience with Vietnam, because he was, a, I believe, a photographer at you Vietnam. You have been waiting to you, to say this on the podcast. You've well, seriously. Several times. But I'm go ahead. Fuck. Um, okay, I could just hang up and leave. But um, <laughs> no, he like was a photographer in Vietnam or whatever, so it gave him like first-hand experience of like what like gore and flesh looks like and what kind of people look like when they're torn apart Mm -hmm. and all the guts in this are just real guts like they're just pig insides and like intestines and yeah like cow bones and there's one point where like some chick is just holding like a rack of ribs yeah and like like a lamb (laughs) rack of ribs it's crazy well actually it's it's, yeah it really is because um it's it it inspired the death of um uh, uh, David from Shaun of the Dead when he gets pulled out of the, the, the window and then his insides get pulled out either side. There's one of the bikers in this one. In Day of the Dead too. Yeah. There's one of the bikers uh, I believe he's like he's like there on the floor like writhing in it's agony the, and the they're Vietnam pulling bat. out the, the pig guts from yeah. his stomach and I live. I love it. It's I Vietnam love vet. it. He's got the like the, the uniform and all that kind of stuff on. Mm. But um, oh, when all these people showed up, I just had this like really cool concept pop in my head where I was like punks with swords. You yeah, know? I was like, right? this is so cool. They have like maces and like one of them has like, a battle axe. Yeah. Because they, they pop into this kind of problematic 
weapons store when they finally oh show up because you had God. said to me you're like what's with this fucking racist ass track when they hop into this yeah that was, like, was the, yeah but at first i was like it's just animal noises what the fuck and then i was, I was like, like oh, no, oh it's not it's just <laughs> tribal <laughs> chanting going on yeah i have uh, also what kind of african voodoo animal tribal racist bullshit is this soundtrack in the haunted goods it's store crazy <laughs> it's oh really my crazy God. but like that to me is like resorted but I think um, I think Don or Shaun of the Dead specifically was kind of made with the conceit of like right well what do we do if Dawn of the Dead happened in like Europe where you can't just go to the gun store because you know? <laughs> they break in and there's literally it's like right below them it's like the store that they can look into from their little what becomes an apartment at the end it's mm-hmm. just an apartment um, they look down and there's just like all these bones there's like elephant bones and yeah. like like tusks and shit in there <laughs> and it's just yeah. wall to wall guns and it's actually one of the only set pieces that wasn't inside the mall itself it was oh, one really? of the only things filmed offshore yeah the apartment and uh, the gun store were the only things not shot in the actual mall yeah wow also, can I just say there was this one zombie that I I noted. <clears throat> oh, you spe- did. I did. <laughs> Zombies. <laughs> um, there was this just this one zombie. Look at you, just like admiring I Tom Savini. Get a picture of Tom Savini. <laughs> like twirling my hair up with my finger and stuff. <laughs> You're like, take me on this stu- so slab. Pretty. Um, actually, that's a great. That's a great uh, topic for the slab. Is Tom gore. Savini's face? No, just Tom Savini's gore. I'll take um, that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, was this one zombie who I clocked as uh, very Alejandro Jodorowsky, um, uh, the Alchemist uh-huh. fr- from? Um, I was about to say Samsara. I was like, that's not Samsara. Uh, the Holy Mountain. Uh, he was, uh, they were uh, refueling the uh, helicopter. and um, The first time. Yeah. And yeah. they were seeing all this, the, that classic shot of that sloping hill with all the zombies walking down it. And there's this one zombie that was getting closer and closer and closer. And he was literally garbed head to toe like the alchemist. From, the red. from thing. Yeah, it was so good. I, I, was, like, I was like, who is this witch? Stylish bitch. It was yes. so crazy because yeah. the shot is just like, um, this is where they're first like trying to, it's like the daytime where they're mm-hmm. trying to get into the trucks. There was like a shot from far, it looks like uh, a scene from like Don't Look Now or something like mm-hmm. that. Like it looks like, yes. like Jallo because it's like all this gray and then somebody in like, it, it, it's like a red riding hood thing almost where it's yeah. like what is that mm-hmm. and then they just don't really pay attention to it yeah them. yeah <laughs> there's so many different shots in this movie where I was like go back to that I want to see what that was you know As this, uh, the one very questionable thing I thought this was going to be like some sort of like uh, plot point and then like Francine would get her comeuppance at the end but it kind of never really came up again and they're not was, in the next movie yeah um, <laughs> when Steven is I think he's like oh, I don't know. He has a mallet on you. Oh, he's going to get, um, uh, Oh my God. Keenan's dad. And, um, he, so funny, bro. he's like struggling. I literally have the, this bitch just standing there while he struggles to kill as kill the zombie trying to rape him. Like, yeah. She, and, and like, she's they're just, just like rolling looking, around with each other. Though. They're just tussling, you know, yeah. wrist against <sighs> wrist, you know? And she is just like, he's literally calling for her to grab the mallet and whack the zombie. And she's also about to be attacked. And she's, and she's just, just like, standing there. Not like in a Tim from Jurassic Park, like, oh my God, I'm standing around freaking out, panicking kind of way. Yeah. In a, just standing. Wow. It's actually a really nice kind of day. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> like she's just standing around. I did think it was going to be a great kind of like, cause that to me is a great plot point. If he gets out of that, and then they have that contention where they're like, "Why didn't you fucking come help me?" Blah, yeah, blah, blah. but it never went anywhere. But these people, I, I like, feel what? like they don't like each other. There's, yeah. like, there's like a weird, um, oh yeah, I want you to be safe, love you kind of thing. But then also like a, yeah, but if you don't come back, you know, let's just say you don't come back, mm-hmm. um, you can't be the only one to fly that helicopter, which I think is a really good idea. Where it's oh, like we all need to learn how to fly this because if you die, we're fucked. Uh, it's the only reason they don't get robbed earlier is because those guys don't know Mm -hmm. how to fly a helicopter yeah you know the other thing was actually we just kind of glossed over it was the fact that Keenan's dad plugs two little kids it just shoots the fuck out of them this whole scene is crazy because when they first arrive it's dark and then when they're getting attacked by zombies it's bright as fuck out (laughs) Um, like when they're just in this kind of little barn and stuff and like this movie is very good at kind of making you think like like they kind of focus on things where you're like somebody's about to come out of that mm-hmm. or that mm-hmm. wall is about to get broken in mm-hmm. but like this attack 
this attack on these two people is so funny because like he they walk out and he kind of just like Ugh. like they kind of just like um aggressively dance at each other you know <laughs> it's capoeira or something yeah. and then once he like once he like fucks up that first zombie that was on him he uh. literally just like does they both him and the zombie do like acrobatics against each other <laughs> and like fly in separate directions <laughs> like he like <laughs> and like sticks the landing at the end and everything it's crazy and she just stands tens, there tens tens across the board <laughs> but also to be fair they actually give her a lot to do in this movie and she's yes. like um, and that's all in like thanks to her Galen Ross the actress she was like I wouldn't react like this I don't think most women would react like mm-hmm. this like it's not it's not 10 years ago like this isn't a Barbara situation mm-hmm. um, and she's like I want a gun like I love her little speech when she's like I want a gun I don't want you guys to fucking leave me out of shit just cause I'm pregnant mm-hmm. um, and then Ken Farre he's like yeah it sounds sounds fucking good but also mm-hmm. you're not coming out with us until you learn how to use a gun and yeah. how to shoot and fight and all that kind of stuff um, but again it doesn't feel like a yeah girl power she's just like like don't fucking leave me out of shit because yeah. the first time when they get to the mall she's she's left with a gun and then Steven is like um I'm gonna take that and go and then almost gets his ass killed mm-hmm. in that um vent pipe system mm-hmm. it's like where the mall connects to their apartment originally kind of which is actually creepy but he doesn't know how shadows work <laughs> he sees a shadow go over him and he's like are you over there? You know what I mean? Yeah. It makes no sense. Like, he's following the shadow, not the person. Can I just say the sound effects? I literally have that as a note. When he is trying to shoot at that shadow zombie... Bing, bing, bing. Can you Do you literally hear the amount of ricochet noises? I think they use it, like, seven or eight times. Just one bullet. One bullet, bing, like, ricochets seven or eight it's times. It's like a cartoon. Literally a cartoon. I thought it was fucking hilarious. And Ken Farr does call that out later when they're in the, the hunting shop when he's going to try and shoot a zombie through the grates where he's like, if you shoot a bullet in here, it's going to be chasing us around this whole place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, apparently Actually, bullets just... Like, that also happens in Shaun of the Dead at the end where, mm-hmm. he, like, the bu- uh, the box bing, of bullets bing, explode bing. and it, like, bounces yeah. all around the fucking thing. Which I don't think is real. No, it would definitely, if it did ricochet like or something, once. it would ricochet once and then it would lose most of its power. Yeah. That's true. But they literally make it like this thing is like sentient and it's like flying around. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wacky <laughs> as fuck, it it, 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 it it turns out to be the villain in the end. For, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the villain final destination is not death, it's just wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing I love this this one jump cut was just uh, like really just the cake on the top of things, right? So they said like they've done a great job <clears throat> in like securing the like quote unquote like safe house kind of thing, right? Yeah. And it literally just like they all look and it cuts to the door and it's just piled with cardboard boxes. It's just boxes. <laughs> I don't fucking get it because like. When the Hare Krishna is coming to attack her, she just puts cardboard boxes up against yeah. the door and he just pushes the door open. Like, there's no resistance whatsoever. I think it's like, pile them from door to other wall as opposed yeah. to floor to ceiling in front of a door. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no work to it. No. He, like, at no point, the only reason that their apartment is never swarmed is because zombies don't find it. Not because it's, like, yeah. secure. <laughs> Until they're like, okay, the helicopter on the roof might, like, give us away. Maybe we should, like, prep for if people, like, come here. Mm-hmm. So they, like, DIY the fuck out of, like, a, they add an extra wall in so that, like, their yeah, apartment like a entrance. Yeah, full plasterboard wall. <laughs> yeah, there's just a scene of them doing construction in this movie. And then there's a scene of them going, like, jewelry shopping and... Getting um, sweets, asking for coats. And Roger just suits. eating and drinking, like, olive juice. Oh, gross. Or, like, pepperoncinis or something like uh. that. Actually, because real quick before before the move up was the one sentence that came to my mind when I saw <laughs> the boxes in front of the door was pallet boxes in front of the door trying to block it. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, though, it just like it makes no fucking sense at all. Like, it really does not. Like this movie is, um, oh, like there's there's very much so camp in this, and like George, like of like watching any kind of documentary or, or like documentaries about this or interviews he's like yeah you can fucking laugh yeah like this kind of shit is like it's zany it's over the top you know but mm-hmm. like um yeah there's something about this movie that like it's so depressing it yeah really is. it's um, not fun 
there's but I also think like again like it it also that boils down to the actual message that he had with the film was that um the the kind of uh, I was about to say narcissism the um the addiction to capitalism and how it does consumer turn, culture yeah consumer culture and how it does turn us all into mindless zombies and especially with the main cast of characters not particularly uh 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 peter but the other three and especially roger roger does kind of fall into that very well and and, yeah. and francine francine is very much uh, they, they, they like they go mean, out for dinner at one point yeah. in this i'm like fucking hell Turn guy peter into the help no flash. no they didn't know oh, no at first i was like what the fuck are they doing right? yeah but then he was like they were like all right you're not gonna have dinner with us and he's like no it's just for you too yeah and i was like okay i was like right fucking did you hell. not look at that and go oh <laughs> yeah. this feels really awkward i was like this is a little problematic but then he like goes and like <laughs> has like a like pours one out for the homies or whatever yeah that and, i thought was really sweet that's a great piece of character development so we actually uh, haven't opinion. gotten to their relationship yet I think yeah, they're yeah. adorable. They're like they, they're like uh, they meet for the first time. It's guy like love. in the building. I yeah, I thought so too. But then they're like, oh, give him the old this or uh-huh. give him the old whatever. Like they've worked together before. Yeah. You know, it's um, sort of confusing because when they first meet, they like draw guns on each other. Yeah, and then that night they get to, or the next night I suppose they're they like buddy bodies. Yeah, but I think it's so cute. It's like platonic guy love. You know, it's yeah. like oh man, I'm I'm fucking sad your dad or whatever. You know. Not in, like, a gay way. I don't want to suck your dick. But, like, <laughs> you know, no, if I you do... asked me to, I would. Like, as a friend. As a, <laughs> as a friend. But... but it's so cute, though. But it's I not think they're adorable. <laughs> you know? And um, Kev Farre next to him is just, like... Like, his big brother. Like, Kev Farre is, like, 7'2". Or something. You know, like, that's actually huge. the one thing that I thought was really fun was that little kind of, like, how did you get into the army? Uh, because I'm... T- because everyone was... He says, like, everyone was, like, midgets or something. And, like, he... Oh, I think they need somebody to look up to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, that's what I need. It is good. And I enjoy, like I've said on the podcast before, I'm a fan of like dialogue heavy movies. It's kind mm-hmm. of why I, I like Tarantino and stuff like that, where like, yeah. I don't mind just a 25 minute long like conversation, conversation. with people. Yeah. And their little um, Peter and Franz conversation in the back of the helicopter when they're first flying, I really liked it, where it was like, well, like, what are you leaving behind? Um, and she, she has one moment where she's, like, kind of problematic white lady, where he's, like, she's, like, who are you leaving behind? And he's, like, some brothers. And she's, like, like, street brothers or, like, real brothers? And he's, like, both, you know? Mm. But, like, their little dialogue where he's, like, you know, I just like to know who everybody is or, like, why everybody is the way they are and stuff. And she's, like, me too. It's, it's, <laughs> it's weird, but I really like little moments like that. And yeah. I'm, like, oh, that was sweet, you know? I, you care about the people in this movie. I, yeah. No, to be fair, I really do think it's, a, like, especially, like, um, the, the kind of thing between him and Roger and the fact that he has to shoot Roger. But, like, the fact that they bury him in that kind of, like... I was uh, like, that's so tacky! Don't you dare bury me in a mall! <laughs> Throw me out to the fucking zombies, but... Ah, no, I, I did think it was sweet, because then it, it does allow for that scene where he comes over and he pours a one for his his homie, you know what I'm saying? It does, it does give that, you know? And yeah. I think it's really good, but also... Buried in a mall, though. <laughs> yeah, all right, In the botanical enough. section of a mall. Actually, don't they do that in um the uh, Zack Schneider's one? They just throw them over the side and then they do that, like, four-barrel like shotgun funeral kind of thing I'm actually way less familiar with that I've seen that movie probably like five times I've seen this this would be this would be my second time seeing this film and it no, would I be mean, my the, last time seeing Schneider. this film for a very long time I mean the, the Zack Schneider one oh, no I mean, I mean this one I know but <laughs> that's irrelevant to what I was saying <laughs> <laughs> Zack Schneider went don't get me wrong I actually don't even think we really oh, we talked about that kind of briefly on the podcast last week but like that's a solid solid remake it is very much you know on yeah. a movie that's already very gory it's like holy shit that's a yeah. CG zombie baby but I do think this film leans almost a little I, I mean again I know we we specifically decided to watch the extended cut but I do and I think this is why I do not really I know I'm not saying it's a bad film I'm really not I'm just saying I personally don't like it because I do think that 
like for a good 45 50 minutes it is a pure character study kind of thing with the whole cabin fever thing and it really just irks me the wrong way just watch the theatrical cut if you want something if you want the same movie but just a little bit more succinct Mm -hmm. because like (laughs) spoiler alert like i said these people aren't in the next movie so it's not like which i find really really disappointing you know i think like that also is kind of like a a turn off for me because Mm -hmm. they survive you know spoiler alert again like they survive they get away um after he's like he's like no I'm gonna kill myself and he's like you know I'm actually not gonna kill myself don't don't leave me you know why don't you risk your life to get back down here it's probably more dangerous for you to get back down here and save me but um yeah I do think Roger is specifically before he dies Roger just becomes so aggravating to be around yeah he does too much he just becomes like I literally have Roger is just a total fuckhead redneck by the end (laughs) before he dies and like specifically just because they now this that's a fantastic idea I really do appreciate because that's a smart way to do it is reversing the long trucks to cover up like the entrances and things like that I thought that was such a smart idea but but the one thing about it was the way like Roger was going about it was like you're just being so extra and I could probably put that down to maybe it's a fever that he's getting um because I think up until that point it's only slightly hinted at that a we got this thing in the ass into a zombie oh he's, and, um, he's, just, he's too much he really does and but like <laughs> that it's like he survives yeah. a zombie attack because I think that was the closest they have like very small very brief encounters with zombies while they're doing stuff and it's kind of yeah. like oops excuse me like they kind of just walk around them Yeah. but like this is the one where like he's like fuck like he like loses his footing and he like actually almost gets bit um, and kind of like fucked up or whatever and then he leaves his bag and then yeah. I think like um, I think we're supposed to get that he's like snapped a little bit yeah but um, it's it's really sudden like considering yeah. that like I think if this was a bigger ensemble cast I don't think you would notice as much but because we've spent like an hour and 40 with these four characters Already, like yeah. suddenly and I think like predominantly <laughs> very we spend it with him and Daenerys Targaryen all of a sudden just wanting to torch everybody <laughs> yeah like it real. just it's like the penny has suddenly turned like, yeah that's how he goes from being total normal guy to being like Bat shit crazy. And Peter calls him out. He's like, look, that's fucking fine, but like, it's mm-hmm. not just your life. Like, you're also yeah, risking my life yeah. for this, you know? Exactly. And I did go back and help you get your bag, and yeah. you died. But, oh my god, Fran in this fucking scene. I'm like, why is she even out on the rooftop? There's She's so, missing every so zombie. many shots of her just like, yeah. <laughs> just like looking up at the sky, and there's so many shots of the helicopter just flying over the mall one side and then flying back over. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I, I, you know, that was also another thing that I was looking at. It was like, if they're trying to preserve so much like fuel for this, uh, get out of the sky! Why the fuck are you up there in the first place when you're trusting it to literal either army people or or police? It was never really kind of where certain Peter and Roger. They're police. They're um, police. Oh, so just for like, I was going to say, yeah, for a little bit of context, we like kind of didn't explain who, like what any of these people are. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, those two are police. <laughs> um, and Stephen and Fran are from the radio or from the news uh, station. Couple? But Peter is, oh, no, they are. She oh, says, are? Okay. she says on and off or she says uh, most of the time when, <laughs> um, when Peter asks her. But um, they, like, stole, uh, like, a weather news report, like, helicopter or whatever, like, uh-huh. that. and that's the only reason they can, like, get away. I'm surprised. I thought at the start of this that people were going to overhear him, like, kind of saying that to her. I mm-hmm. thought there was going to be, like, a... A scuffle. Um, yeah, like, bring us with you kind of thing, because, like, he's like, um, we're going to evacuate because this place is going to get blown the fuck up. <laughs> so meet me there at nine. Whispering, but only... Like, whispering in the way that he's only just, like, holding his hat up in front of his mouth. He's not actually being quiet. Mm. You know? Um, and they don't show that either. They don't show them actually getting out. There's like, there's no no, it's just... there's no panic. There's no, fuck, people are going to find out we're stealing this. They just arrow up in the sky. Yeah, there's kind of a very <laughs> quick kind of cut from that to that. And then all of a sudden, mall. Yeah. And actually, come to think of it, there was Let's one the thing mall, that I noticed yeah. was the music that was being played as they were shopping around. When I say shopping around, I mean they were, you know, 
raping the stores. Um, <laughs> the music that they use in that scene is also the music that is uh, borrowed and used in 28 Days Later during their shopping scene. Yes. But it is uh, slowed down and it is made a little bit happier uh, than what it's played in Dawn of the Dead. And I, I just think I love those little like callbacks because I was also hearing um, a piece of music that was uh, used by Goblin, but is also Gorillaz uses it, and I think in it's El the, Manana or something like that. It's, uh, it's uh, intro do, for do, Demon do, Days. Do, 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 do. It's, it's the first very, track on Demon yeah, Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I think I love these sort of things where it's like, like I've heard that before. A lot of it was stock. Yeah, a lot of it was just shit they could use for free. I love it. I, I, I really do. I, I think it's a. As I said, like, I think it's a great movie. Is it a slugfest? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. I think it's effective. I think it kind of like is. Like, it's super, super, super iconic. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many video games or how many oh, speaking things of I've seen games. of, like, um, zombie shipping set in malls. Yes. You know, there's plenty of that shit happens. It's, like, Left 4 Dead or... That's exactly what I was just about uh, to say. Dead Rising. There yeah. was that one that used to be... That's just set in a mall. Like, mm -hmm. those first two games are just completely set in a mall. Left 4 Dead, one this. of the scenarios is them breaking into a mall... Um, but I mean, not to survive there, but to get to this car that they know is there, yeah. And they they're getting the fuel for that car, and it is the exact car in this movie. Yeah, for it real. is literally it's like the a same punch thing. Or something like that. Yeah, it's like a little actually, little really quick. Um, uh, Stephen. Steven. While he's like jumping into the back of the car, one of the zombies grabs his leg, and I think he they dig a finger oh, into the and could, like, yeah. this blood just like squirts <laughs> open like a and I was like yes it actually gave gore. me um, oh what's uh, Dead Alive it gave me the vibe of when the mom like pops her like wound and it goes into oh, the yeah. custard yeah, that's yeah. exactly the kind of effect oh it my was. god I loved it cause it was like that's it was one of his bite marks or like he got bit yeah. a couple of times like during that scuffle or whatever like Roger or and she just opens it the fuck up Roger. It's Roger. Roger gets yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he's in the wheelbarrow for like kind of the, for rest, the rest of the film. Of the movie, yeah. <laughs> but my thing is like, okay, well, we're going to kill you now. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. Like, you're already dead. Like, I don't know why the fuck we're like, why am I wasting my time with you, you dead bitch? But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it's like, I think like the urgency is different than like, obviously, like there's like right? 30 years in between. But like, usually it's kind of like a that's the dilemma is like if somebody's bitten it's like well we gotta do this now like, yeah. we can't keep you around yes but there's always there's always 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 somebody in a zombie movie that's like like if there's a scene in every single movie with a zombie in it where somebody will inevitably like they'll get along further down the journey and then they'll discover that they've got like a bite and it's like uh -huh. I'm fine I'm fine you know it's like you're not fine you're already dead, guy. Yeah. You know? But um, I think it's sweet. They, like, they just keep pumping him full of morphine. <laughs> and bring up shopping and stuff. He is dope to fuck for most of that film. I love it. He makes some funny-ass noises, though. Yeah. There's so many noises where he's just like... Ah, ah. <laughs> well, speaking of being super cute moments, um, Francine is... Uh, there's the... You know that kind of weird plate of glass that they keep pushing in and pushing back. Oh, what an awkward door, which right? has another like bigger industrial door behind it that they right? never use. They just ignore it. It's, um, there's this scene where there's a nun, as they were closing the door, oh, there's a nun that. zombie. Oh, God. <laughs> could you just, could you get my the yeah. habit? Yeah. Her tail coat or something is like stuck in the door and she like slowly opens it to let him through and yeah. then the, the, the nun just kind of like Thank solemnly you. walks off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the habit is stuck in the door and she's the only one that hasn't walked off yet. And Ish. it's weird. I feel like these people very quickly adjust to zombies not being human anymore. Like, yeah. they don't really struggle with that. Because there's a scene where uh, a very handsome zombie, I think it's literally right there. He's like the last one to leave before the nun is stuck. Uh, it just kind of sits there and he's he looks kind of sad or whatever. And she's like... Aww. Yeah, like he just looks like he's contemplating her while she yeah. is contemplating him. He's like, let me. You know in. what I mean? You know, it's just kind but of like no one just like because she's stuck by like it looks like it's like her hair, but it's yeah. really like the habit or whatever like that. And then it's so polite. She's just like, here you go. Yeah, go on. Yeah, you know, yeah, go about your go, day. Go about your day. Enjoy your shopping. The yeah. other thing that I thought was really kind of heartwarming is when Peter is trying to comfort Roger as he's dying. Uh, and like Roger says like I'm going to try not to come back and then he says that like five more times I was like okay stop 
traumatizing me. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, I'm, I I'm just your thought, friend. Just die. Like, okay, first time is the charm. That was like, I have never, I, I, like in any other zombie movie, I've never heard anyone say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, holy shit. That like, honestly, like those, what was it? Like five words, six words, uh, like as one sentence just says everything about the character. Yeah. And I was like, that's perfect. But then he repeats it like five or six times. Yeah, it's like, okay, now you're making it tacky. <laughs> Stop it. First time was good. The rest of the time it was dead. <laughs> you didn't need to do all that. You didn't need to. You were extra for extra's sake. Well, speaking of extra, that face. Can we just talk about it? When I think it looks so back. cool. To me, he this is like my ages depiction of about a zombie 50 for, years. But I think it's very effective. And it's literally just tissue. I literally have, as a note, wait, what? Why the fuck did he age about 50 years? <laughs> it's, it's all this. It's all around the gels and the eyes and shit like that. Because yeah. it's literally just single ply tissue paper with like latex and grey paint on it. Just to make it look like aged skin, kind mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. um, and he dies in bed. You know, it's nice. Dies off screen in bed. Yeah. You know, it's kind of cute. It's kind of sad. But I feel like it's one of those things. Like, because they had been around him, like, turning into a zombie. For they said it took like three days at the most. Yeah. You know, which is a long fucking time in a zombie movie. It's like, well, how haven't you got this shit together? <laughs> you know, which I do just before we move on the parallels between this movie and like nowadays. I'm like, people are like, oh, it's obvious it's this. And people are like, no, you're evil. And it's a conspiracy. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. Like, Hello, I am a scientist. I'm telling you exactly what we need to do. And then people are like fuck you guy don't fucking tell me what to do absolutely no i 100 percent agree i think you can you can draw those parallels and that line would be quite thick but seriously <laughs> though i was kind of watching it like holy fuck i feel like we're <laughs> we're doing another uh romero zombie movie you know let's yeah. dig the old bitch up and let's see what he can do <laughs> <laughs> seriously though i feel like uh if any kind of like, I don't feel like the early 2000s needed another, like, thing. I don't feel like there was a big uh, cultural shift enough. But I feel like now, like, conspiracy theorists are, like, more and more numerous. Yeah. You know? You know what your name is. You know who you are. Bitch. <laughs> you little, you little, you little, little bitch. Little she bitch showed up at my little brother, little brother and sister's school the other day. And... Oh, I'm not With joking. With pitchforks and, and, and torches um, yeah. and fucking signs. She got out of her car and made yeah. a fucking scene. And, like, Did she? Yeah. Started Fuck attacking off. parents and... Um, no fucking and way. The principal. Yeah. You're a lunatic, lady. Even after her daughter got COVID? <laughs> Yeah. fucking hell, bro. <laughs> that was my thing. I was like, look, also, like, this is tea. Like, I don't care. Um... <laughs> If you're going to show up at a school, show up at a school your children actually go to. Because it's a yeah. very good way to get yourself locked up in an asylum. It is, you actually. Crazy. Yeah, you look like a <laughs> fucking crazy bitch. Can somebody call the paddy wagon and get this woman out of here? Like, I'm... Uh, like, we're just... This is, like, completely off topic now at this point. But, like, <laughs> if you're... If you really are that fucking much of a lunatic... Like, and I've said as much. I have been very clear... If you're that much of a lunatic and you want to push that, like, fuck off. Stay your ass inside. Just stay your ass inside and fuck off. <laughs> like, we, like, there's enough problems going on without someone turning around and saying, like, you're fucking right to this. Uh, yeah. Fuck off. Get fucked. <laughs> I have Wear a, a fucking mask, you stupid <laughs> cons. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's not that hard. I mean, we used to do leper colonies. Can we not just have, like, anti-vaxxer colonies now? Yeah. You know? Sorry, like, we're Refer just, Refer to like... them off screen. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, it's Look a over stupid there. bitch over there. <laughs> <laughs> On the moors. <laughs> Moor or Sorry. less. <laughs> so down to the dead. craned its neck <laughs> yeah. this is like our third completely like irrelevant to the movie tangent tangent St. James <laughs> Lallery Dupree Delacroix and Cartier stay away from me or I will assault you <laughs> <laughs> no I think yeah we make our stance very fucking clear if you're if you've kept off of a wax for this long like just stay the fuck away from us the girls sure. who get it get it and the yeah. girls who don't don't stay the fuck are you like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are you know who you are for real fucking stupid cunt <laughs> so down to <laughs> Also, oh. if more than one of you guys thinks it's about you, if the glove fits, stop listening to our show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Gross. Ugh. Not 
today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> what were we even talking about? This fucking movie. Did, I talk, did you or did you not come for me? <laughs> <laughs> so. Those were the perfect three I could have used there. <laughs> so this God, whole part the at the <laughs> end, I actually really like. And it's like, it's very effectively threatening. The idea of just like a biker gang rolling in. Um, <laughs> Which, by the way, they ask nicely at first. <laughs> uh, it's a trick. They're totally tricking them. They say that there's <laughs> three of them. And they're and she's like, oh well, if there's only three, and there's literally like twenty two motorbikes and a couple of vans. They're literally, that show up. like laughing their fucking heads off <gasps> yeah, while they're talking, real. and your mom is like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh no, I love it. This dude, ah. th- this main dude with the like World War Two helmet on, yeah. and um, I found out yes, day that it was... is a World War Two. I did think because I could see the. It looked. It needed like a spike it, on the top of it, right? You know. Oh my god. Um, I also found out that Madonna's first album is closer to World War Two than it is to modern day. <laughs> gross. Yes, like, that's fucking crazy. Oh my god, but, gross. So it's this guy and Tom Savini. Fuck me up. Both have like a nice strong nose, a big mustache. You know, they've got like a look. You know, Tom uh-huh. Savini is fucking fly as fuck in this movie. But um, this biker gang just rolls in, like kind of begin act three. I feel like this is actually, you know, it's like their last half of act three. Yeah. Um, It's c- pretty much the last maybe it's, 30 minutes of the film no like straight up less. it is yeah but um this is where like where we get like it's mania like it's crazy it's where yeah. we get like the most guts the most gore the most zombies mm-hmm. um in one shot but like i love that shot of they're kind of looking like through binoculars like out to see like the road because this mall is set up weird where like yeah. it's it's so picture the mall and then like it's the like exactly yeah, yeah yeah like you have to drive down like into it it's yeah. like it's kind of cool but we get this shot at night of just like one, two, three, and then like all of the rest of these lights come in, and I'm yeah. like, "That's so cool!" I always think that's so threatening, and like, it, yeah, it's, it's fun, very you know? threatening. It's very scary, and, and like, I don't know you how many just see that you can hear them. As exactly, well. yeah. You're like, expecting you kind of a yes. I was literally just about to say that. Oh my god, yeah. And they show up, and I'm like, "Oh, these dudes are so cool," you know, because they're like, "Oh well, they're obviously not dummies if there's this many of them and they've been able to survive this long on the road." Oh yeah, on the road. That's what he says. Yeah, it's kind of Mad Max. It kind of gives me that kind of vibe. And then they show up, and all these dudes raid the fuck out of this mall. But mm-hmm. when they get to the weapon store, I'm like, it's so cool. Yeah. They've got battle axes. One guy and grabs maces like, and bow and uh, arrows. The, the 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 you know the like the sound blocking headphones. Yeah, for guns. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. I was like, wait, hold on. You're a biker. You're an anarchist. You're like fucking destroying this mall. You're shooting guns everywhere, and you decide to just. Why not? You, know, you might as well wanna, save like, the ears. A lot of people don't know your decimals, girls. A lot <laughs> of you guys don't know that anything above 85 is really damaging to your ears. Just saying. Or isn't that the thing? Like, if you if an explosion goes off next to you and you hear, like, a high pitch ringing in your ear, it's like, once that goes away, you don't hear that pitch again anymore. Because yeah. it's just been, like, blasted out of your head. Yeah. But, like, this last half an hour is so... A lot of children of men. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, this like this like last half hour is just like metal as fuck. It's like so punk. Yeah. It's so grungy and dirty. And it's just kind of like Tom Savini running around a mall with a fucking pirate sword. <laughs> with, a, with a pirate sword? He just pulls out a scimitar out of nowhere. It's fucking crazy. But first he pulls out a comb. Uh, a switchblade comb. Oh, he does the. He does the little. Oh, he even comments thing. on it. He's just like, yeah, I, I gotta keep my so stash. Like, I think he's like the guy looks at him funny. He's like, I gotta keep my it's stash looking good or something like oh, that. I love it. I love like the whole kind of like this last half hour. <sighs> I watched just an hour of this, <laughs> you know, because it also does the thing where, which is kind of always the thing in zombie movies, where it's like people bad. Like, just people in general. It's like, humans are the real whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, they kind of take this to their advantage, where they're like, right, well, they've blasted in the front doors, and they're making all this noise, they're fighting. Um, I'm surprised more of them don't actually die in this. I think literally only, like, three or four of the bikers die. Mm -hmm. But they get literally, like, ripped to pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, But they go in, and they're like, right, we're just going to use this to advantage, this is going to be our time to escape. When Um, they get, like, super fucking ripped up. It was Scorch W. Bush. (laughs) Loved it. (laughs) Gorge. It's good though. It's where it, like the Gagatandra. Yeah, this puts the gore in gorge, you know? Um, <laughs> gorge R. R. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Write your last book, guy. Gorge Washington. <laughs> I could go all day. <laughs> you could and I would kill you. <laughs> but um <laughs> Now I, I love this. There's just something about like 
zombies and punk are like kind of intertwined in my mind well didn't you see return of the living dead before you saw dawn of the dead yeah return of the living dead part two specifically so um, that's like and also the first movie is just like one of the it's it's just the punkest movie yeah. ever it's but so also good. like the the cover for that is punk as fuck because it's black zombies and, and white jackets. and night of the Li- no, no no like the original is oh, punk yeah. as fuck because it's like uh, it's a black and white photograph of uh, of that Shelley, like that girl. girl, and then the Night of the Living Dead is f- pure green acid writing. Yeah. I love it. It's punk as fuck, man. It is for some reason. I always have that kind of thing, and I, I for some reason in and then you're one movies, with the blue skin and the orange fucking hair. Uh, that's punk as fuck. Man. That's Linnea Quigley. That's the chick we saw yeah. nailed to a thing. These leggings I bought specifically because they look exactly like the ones she wears in that movie. Nice. Her name is like Trash or whatever, and she's like, um, they're all talking about how they want to die or how they think they're going to die, and she's like, I picture myself being ripped apart by like lots of old men or whatever. And then that's what happens. <laughs> she's so fucking cool in that movie because like when she becomes zombie and she becomes like the one, like mm-hmm. she's like. You know, she's not the two, she's not the three, she's the one. Um, <laughs> she's, she's like, she's, she's that painted bitch. solid white with just this red hair. Mm. And there's a where we like first get to see skin, her. No? no, well, it's like, no, it's not blue. Like, it's it's like white, white, white. It's uh-huh. so good. But like, um, in those movies, a lot of the zombies are green, blue, gray, black, yeah. dark brown, True. purple, whatever. I'm probably but, just um, thinking of some random zombie. She walks up to this homeless guy and he like can't really see like. Like What's what the crack on? is yeah. going on? Because she also has a fake vagina in the movie. They flattened her genitals out in that movie, um, like with the prosthetics, mm-hmm. so you couldn't see her pussy because she dances naked. But she just unhinges her jaw and just takes this like the well, whole top of this guy's head shit. in her mouth. Oh, so yeah. good. So <laughs> stop talking about other movies. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, like, we need to, it needs to be said, like, the famous quote um, uh, from Peter, he said it's something that my dad, uh, oh no, his his grandfather grandfather said. Who was interested in voodoo. Yeah. Uh, Again, like, that's where, like, of course, this, uh, he's trying to, you can see Romero trying to move away from the whole Venus, you know, extravaganza. (laughs) Um, Gaga Tondra. Oh, (laughs) R.I.P. And um, she... Uh, he says, like, obviously, when there's no more room in hell, uh, the dead, the dead. Shall walk the earth. And it's, it is, like, out of everything, it is the famous quote from these movies. It's so good. It's so good. It's yeah. so threatening as well, though. It's so And just he like, says it again as, uh, like, a, a, I think he's a news reporter or something like that on the TV in the remake. He's in the remake, and he's also, I think, that, like, I think a clip from this movie makes its way into Shaun of the Dead. Like, at some point they're watching this, or it's on somewhere, or something like that. Um, like, I think Shaun of the Dead actually takes from this movie so much. Oh, a lot. Like, including Shaun of the Dead really music. is Dawn of the Dead, but in, like... Croydon. Yeah. You know, you know, like, Croydon, you know? West Yorkshire. <laughs> but for real, though, Dawn of the Dead, or, or Shaun of the Dead always freaks me out. I don't know why. Really? Like, yeah, I think it's just because we don't really get to see like um kind of council estates or like just regular villages and shit yeah. taken over it's mm-hmm. not like a big city or like and it's also done i think kind of realistically you know for some reason it always makes me feel kind of like Ugh. Mm. um what the fuck were we talking about <laughs> the 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 um the random racist interpretation of a of a mexican um biker who randomly has a super extravagant sombrero oh, the on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really fucking random. I know, I love it. I think everybody and only says, like, so the good. super racist just like, ay, 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 and all of this kind of thing. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. And, like, yeah, of course, like, the guy in the beginning with the red band, or the blue bandana, lo- a long, fake-ass wig, and literal brown face. Just brown face. face, yeah. Like, I was gonna crazy. say, it's not even good brown face, but we you know got, what I mean? We it's... kind of glossed over that fact. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like, but also, there's a... I don't know why it always bothers me in movies where, um, and you see it a lot in older movies, when you see a dead black person, they just have them painted like a zombie in this movie. Yeah. Like, they're just... Black, black person with white paint on it looks oh. crazy which is lo- exactly what the sun looks like in black white that show mm-hmm. it looks insane but um yeah this whole like this like last half hour of carnage is so good and then it just yeah. kind of ends, ends. yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> they're like okay what happens to Tom Savini in this film um half of the bikers is he torn apart or uh half of the bikers or like more than half of the bikers literally like five of them die they all just they'll just go they'll just leave they'll just leave yeah see bikers ruin everything 
You would know. I know. But, um, <laughs> uh, there is one shot. It's badass as fuck, though, where Ken Farah is, like, open. He's, like, open the ceiling, but he's got all these, like, kind of random, like, low-angle shots on people. Yeah. And uh, the main... He's not even the main guy, but we get a lot of shots of him in the biker gang. We he, get like, a Wilhelm scream. Good. We fully do. It's tradition. <sighs> But, like, he's, like, on his way out the door or whatever, thinking that they're, like, they've gone. They're mm-hmm. all, like, retreating. And then he's, like, outside the mall, and Ken gets this one shot, and he, like, flips. He does, oh, like, a yeah! backflip off the back of the bike. No, he does a forward flip off, the like, the back of the bike. So good. And then he, like, um, yeah, he gets ripped apart. I love it's it. fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> the gore... Oh, sorry, I, I really do want to stress, like, the amount of, like amazing practical effects that are used in this film like even if it was like what we called it we like we literally know it's just raw animal meat or but or my brain registers um, that's real flesh yeah you know as opposed like, to it being just bags of blood or yeah. like it being cg whatsoever or jelly that yeah. was used in the oh uh, yeah it's just um that original like, night of the living or the living dead is good though because it is again they're just eating like like ham off yeah. bone or something it, it's it great. works it really works and like it's something about it like yeah like you said like it, it physically registers in your mind that that is physically there that they yeah. are ripping that out of his stomach like they're not tricking me yeah into thinking you know it's like you it's just so know good. you know it's like physical like you could you could taste it I can see people you know picking I mean? up guts and like pulling them apart yeah speaking of guts and gore there's one zombie kill that we forgot to mention which I think is the iconic one there's a zombie that's like pulling up on them when they're refueling and then the guy steps up and just gets the top of his head just sliced oh, right yes! off the helicopter oh my god it's so good but I was like they did that in camera for real with the helicopter and you can tell because the guy's head is stacked like five inches above where his yeah. forehead is it's huge <laughs> and he just kind of oh, ooh. yeah and I was paying attention to this scene because that's another one of like he looks a, very, a lot very like scene. um uh the guy was it Lurch not Lurch um, yeah Lurch from Adam's Family no from oh god what's it called Carry On Screaming you know the you know the um the kind of like caveman-esque like mm. kind of thing it literally reminded me of that because like you could see like where the grey makeup like line parted oh, and real. you knew where the head was like it wasn't a bow cap it was like a tortilla or something yeah. like that like, it was so thick it was crazy looking Yeah, but like it's such a good shot and the way the blood all just like spills the fuck out mm-hmm. um, also just before they head off Peter gets uh, or no Steven, Steven. just gets um, that was gets actually <laughs> Yeah, that was the one death that I looked at and was like, oh, no. But also, like, it does get extended so long because I look... Oh, God, could you just die already? I've been bitten again. (laughs) But, like, it's one of those deaths where, like, he tried to get up the shaft. Oh, yeah. um, (laughs) All the time. Am I right, ladies? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, So you get back down is the trouble for me. Yeah, because, like... (laughs) (laughs) He, um because the zombies like for whatever reason the door opens and obviously the zombies cave in on him yeah. blah, blah, and they pull him down another very famous shot but they also movie. like super uh, like he takes he like fully gets away from them as well yeah like even though there's like eight or nine of them gives them an opportunity to get him again right you know? oh. then he has like a revenge where like fuck you and it kind of goes eight mode and like fucks these people up yeah but like he and Peter just fucks him up right full on headshot like, right in tap. front of her yeah he goes she's like is he dead and she's like or she's like is he dead and he's like yeah and she's like oh I guess that kind of sucks I guess right and then he shows so nonchalant up nonchalant about it well cause I think she was expecting it cause she asks him was he dead and yeah. then they wait around for hours though to see if he comes back and he doesn't answer his radio um yeah again a lot of weird time jumps in this movie as well there's not is a lot of dead? specified I guess. Yes. <laughs> you know? and, uh, then he just shows up and like without hesitation, without any like, no, Stephen, head is just blown straight through. I love it. Splattered. And he all just over the does that kind of um, the, the the fall uh, fall sideways out of frame oh. as his death. You yeah. know what I mean? And I love that because like you're just looking at like you could see the eyes like just dart. To, to look down at the, the mattress like there like, like just off yeah. camera <laughs> a lot of the zombie kills in this are actually like outrageous yeah because they're again none of the like none of the zombies were actual actors mm-hmm. um except for like main characters turned into zombies like yeah. all the extras and stuff 
anytime some of them get shot in the head or they get squibs or whatever because there's like there's kids getting shot in this movie and there's like random parts where people will get killed but the zombie actors in this make me laugh so hard because a lot of the kills are just like oh you know oh yeah oh, you know <laughs> yeah if that was actually the one thing I love like, the good chat here the the um the sniper scope that was being used yeah I loved the fact that they were firing at zombies that didn't even uh, I know I love that in like Left 4 Dead or uh oh, just, you killing know, them the, just killing them for fun because it's it's good it's fun but the thing was is that there were zombies like literally like two or three feet away from like Roger in the tub being eaten and Peter was shooting like zombies like the across other the, the mall, mall. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> oh my god! But like, let's let's just talk about this last scene because this was the level of actionness, and this was just unbelievable. Like the questionable motives. She just he tells her to go on. I, like I'm I I can't go on or something. Like he just decides to like die. Well, I I and get then it. He decides not to die. Yeah. Like when he they both could have clearly dropped up that ladder kicked it down and literally just waltzed their asses into that fucking helicopter. And she waits. She waits for a while and then she waits like, for five or six zombies to climb up the ladder. I was gonna say yeah. Even though oh, she knew he decided up. to stay. The zombies that climb up the ladder are the zombies that have been stuck in the escalator the whole time. Oh yeah. There's, there's like three or four zombies that are on the escalator but they keep just like getting up to the top Whoa. and like come back to Yeah literally. It's so fucking funny. But um like the, it's not the first suicide we saw in this movie mm-hmm. like in the the kind of apartment raid mm-hmm. um, I think it's the first actual zombie attack we get like on screen yeah once they kill the zombies that were attacking him he shoots himself he just kills himself yeah. but it's so grim you know yeah. I, I don't think they play up the grimness of this you know um, I appreciate that because a lot of zombie films kind of turn that theme on its head and they're just like um, like oh no, it's heroic saves and blah blah blah. It's like no, this is like no, you in just a zombie gave us a zombie. apocalypse. Like it's literally everyone for themselves. Also, you killing yourself just gives us another zombie. Yeah. Also, especially when it's thing. never fully confirmed, like a bite or a scratch or something like that turn someone into a zombie until like much well, later well they say it's a viral infection in this movie and there's mm-hmm. a couple of scenes well uh, there's at least one scene where what's his fucking name again um where Roger just gets like a mouthful of zombie blood and I'm like oh my god <gasps> that's when I you thought, can't even like, get a mouthful oh, of not zombie blood <laughs> trust like, me I've tried <laughs> <laughs> that's where like I was looking at it going like oh like is is that how he became a zombie but no it's cause he obviously got bitten but like I, I immediately thought I was like, oh, is that where the blood virus idea kind of can come from? Because yeah. that's immediately what jumped into my head. And they don't you ever explain mean? it. They don't actually wrap it up in mm. this movie like the way. Which I, I don't mind. No, I don't mind because it's uh, there it's is kind, kind of, of unimportant. A, yeah, it's unimportant, but it, we do get kind of theories. We mm. get like um, the first one, obviously being like space, because like these are these are the same zombies as the first as, the, as yeah. Night of the Living Dead, just like a couple of weeks later. Um, yeah, it does take place. But in then the we get like period, voodoo yeah. uh, as a suggestion. We get mm-hmm. viral outbreak and stuff like that. And then we kind of, kind of, get kind of like straight up philosophical shit where it's mm-hmm. like, again, just hell. Like there's just no more room left in hell. Mm-hmm. Which I think if you just took that as your like idea on paper when there's no room left in hell, the dark shall walk the earth. I'm like, no, that's a great concept mm-hmm. for a movie or like a short or something like that. I think that would be so cool. You know, hell is full. You're not on the list. You can't get in. You weren't invited to this year's Met Gala <laughs> in hell. The theme was uh, Fallen Angel. You did not fulfill the brief. <laughs> Talking about you, Katy Perry. <laughs> I can fill a brief like nobody else. Oh, yeah, fill that brief. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, they get away. Uh, oh, which, actually, sorry, real quick before the, anything, is um, the scene where um, he, there's a zombie who grabs the gun from Roger, I think. Let him and steal it. he just holds on to it. And then uh, Peter, as he's coming up and tr- before he gets on the elevator, he tries to whack the same zombie, but he grabs the other gun, yeah. the zombie, and then he drops the other one. He's like... Do you know what and I mean? it doesn't go anywhere, but like, um, uh, but I thought that was so striking because I was like, "Is this where they start to gather intelligence?" Well, it will. It will eventually. Like when we get to Day of the Dead. Like I say, I haven't seen it, but like, 
I haven't like sat down from opening credits to closing credits scene. Yeah, it's like it's, it's a Romero movie. Like everybody mm-hmm. knows. Um, like we'll eventually get there where zombies can kind of talk or yeah. the zombie. Like the zombies in this are just kind of stupid. They're not like feral or like rabid kind of. Yeah. You know, like it is kind of easy to just walk around. Why were you looking at me when you said that? <laughs> Do you need glasses, lady? I was speaking right into the microphone. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm still holding on to my firm beliefs. This is only like the second or third time I've watched this film, and it will be a very long time before I watch this film again because it really is just such a slog to watch through and it's again it's a great movie it is There's you're allowed nothing, to not like a classic I'm I'm a net, I'm allowed to not like it purely <laughs> just because like I feel like a full hour of this could have been cut from the film and it would have been great just watch the theatrical cut next time yeah you know or watch your little fucking Zack Snyder shit Oh, I don't mind that. Like, I'm happy... Uh, you know me. I am happy to watch anything. Uh-huh. Um, including the weirdest kind of porn. But, <laughs> I, you know, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm very... happy to watch this. <laughs> this. Watching this right now makes me happy. Yeah, I say it <gasps> as in the voice of, like, Google. <laughs> like, automated mechanical. It's you watching... Oh, I actually didn't even manage to watch fucking Last of Us on the Left the other night, though. I fell the fuck asleep. But it's like, that's well. just... You committing to an action then not following through. The Jurgen lotion. Never heard of that before. Yeah, it's almost like you were supposed to show up at my house today and look, here we are in your room. <laughs> we're in Studio 2. No, I'm Studio 1. Your, Why are you Studio 1? Your house is Studio 2. Why are you Studio 1? I don't know. Because all the equipment's here? Well, if you can come up with a good explanation, maybe you can be Studio 1. <laughs> oh my god. I want to be Studio 1. I want to be Studio 1. Yeah, so... Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Dawn the movie. Dawn. Uh, Davenport. <laughs> so next week, um, we are bringing you my bloody Valentine. My bloody Valentine. I'm actually very excited. Um, I like yeah, that original movie. We're, we we are, have to watch the uncut. We are going to do uh, my bloody Valentine. You you know why we don't need to explain it um it's just gonna be good some good fun some yeah. gory fun too it's the one you know i feel like uh valentine it's like kind of the alternate movie you could do for valentine's day but like it's kind of lame it's another one of those um slasher i really Donna really want to be thing. scream kind of thing yeah um, and this came that came out after scream yeah it did come yeah it out came out in like 2000 or something mm-hmm. it's got denise richards in it you know it's not bad. Like denise richards. by no means is it it's a got bad Marty movie Shelton but from scream 4 yeah I'm it's five. it's it's pretty good um it's well, fun it's 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 good by standards of you can watch it and have a good time but i want to see a woman get picked up and impaled through the mouth with a shower head and have the water come out the front of her mouth that's what i want i don't want denise's or denise richard's heart in a box anymore <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that's what um we have for you guys next week and um then I think it's Texas Chainsaw after that. Yeah, it is. So, um, obviously the week after, I mean, geez, spoiler alert. But yeah, we'll be reviewing... Um, we said at the start of this episode yeah, we when we did, talked actually, about Texas yeah. Chainsaw for like 10 um, minutes. Yeah, we will be... So next week we will have My Bloody Valentine. <laughs> and then... Bones cracking. Like, <laughs> you are so old now. Um, <sighs> and uh, then we have the... It's just called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it's just Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw. Again. This Again. Is, this, this is the third movie just called... Oh, no. It's the second one just called Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. But it's also, like, the fourth direct sequel to the first movie. Yeah. Like, the last movie, the last Texas Chainsaw we got, was also a retcon a la Halloween 2018, before Halloween 2018. Actually, let's let's just do a quick kind of speculation about this. So, the trailer itself is giving off very heavy Halloween Michael versus Laurie Strode When mom says vibes. we have Laurie Strode at home. Right? So, like, <laughs> to me, that it seems like it's trying to kind of jump off of that trend. And again, that's only what the trailer did. So, I'm only watching that one trailer and then I'm not watching anything else. So, I'll watch yes, it. But Sally and... was first. Oh, no, but that's what I mean. It's like it's it, it seems to me like the giving off Michael versus Laurie a la twenty eighteen Halloween. Which you know I think is saying? the way to go though. I think it's just like clean your franchise up. Yeah, um, you said something about like having legacy characters. Because this is a requel. Yeah. You know, I think to, just clean it up a little bit. I think like it's it's weird for how many leather or for how many Texas Chainsaw movies there is. 
I feel like not a lot of people have seen or know about the vast majority of them. So I think mm-hmm. they like have a good opportunity to go clean slate. Yeah. Um, and they are picking up directly after the first one by having Sally, uh, unfortunately not played by Marilyn Burns because she died only a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Rest in peace. But yeah, I think, um, I think is what I think. I look. I'm I, open. I'm, I'm open. A, yeah, I'm open. I'm gonna. You know, I just. I like the franchise. <laughs> I don't see these new people out there walking new 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 horror movies in nature, but I'm I'm willing to give it a chance. I'm not. I really. I have low expectations, so I'm not going to be disappointed. I like but, the franchise as a whole, so I'm I'm open. Yeah, like I mean, like I like um, Leatherface. Uh, and when I say that I mean, on paper like, like, as an face, idea. like as the third movie or the I think it's the fourth movie with it's Viggo Mortensen in it All right, that's, that movie yeah, I that's, enjoyed uh, that that's movie the third one. Uh, and well, he's then, got a daughter Leatherface has yeah. a daughter in that movie and like and it, like he's learning on the thing like you know a people is a food yeah yeah. and I love that I think that's so cute but like uh, I loved the kind of technology angle that they were kind of going off of that oh because um, he's got like a cyber lag in that yeah. movie and everything and that like mechanical hook thing in the kitchen and it's yeah, good they're it's good they're, they're trashy and they're kind of shitty but they're like schlock, that's, i think that's the entire great. appeal it's really great i just and i don't like the mask in this new one it looks it's it looks like it's it's an unhappy erection it just it looks, looks like yeah. gravity is like <laughs> yeah like they're trying to make him look old but it's like but like leatherface's yeah. face is not his face so like yeah. the mask itself doesn't have to look old mm-hmm you know yeah. what I mean? I think they just make him look too scarecrowish, but I'm open. Oh yeah, I'm open. I like the I, I like the concept. I like the idea. Um, execution might not be the best, but I'm I'm willing to give it a chance. And we so will also a Netflix original. And it, originally it wasn't. In Romania. It was filmed first, and it was scheduled to be released in 2019. So far as I know, that's a bad sign. And um, uh, it wasn't, and then Netflix bought it. That's a bad sign. It is a bad sign. It's a very bad sign. <laughs> so, like again, we're just gonna we're gonna tear that movie to shreds. But next week, my bloody Valentine. Uncut. Uncut. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. There's no point in watching the actual cut, theatrical version. They yeah. cut out entirely Everything. every Everything. like second of gore. So, um, that was Dawn of the Dead, 1978. I keep forgetting that. Dawn. 78. Dawn. Dawn. Literally the year after Suspiria. So we really do appreciate a, a like, subscribe. Make sure to hit that like button. Keep coming back because we really do appreciate our listeners. Love we really do. Hang in there. Spotify is coming. It's on the way. She's on the horizon. Um, and but everybody's leaving sure... there now because of Joe Rogan. But I like. <laughs> um, um, make sure to uh, follow us on Instagram for some daily updated content. Bitch. All right. Okay. <laughs> You've been listening to <laughs> They're Here podcast. podcast. <laughs> oh, sorry. Good tongue pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what is that tongue wooden <laughs> holy fuck oh, <laughs>